we have to talk a little bit about uh, uh, chemistry. Not much, but otherwise these terms would be meaning meaningless to you. I would be writing names and you would be memorizing the names without actually uh, knowing uh, what is involved at all. So I'll have to give you a crash course on uh, chemistry and physics. All ordinary matter, like us, uh, this projector, this table, are made out of atoms of chemical elements or molecules, which are a combination of different atoms, sometimes the same, held together by electrical forces. Now, here is the scale of an atom. A tip, the diameter of a typical atom is 10 to the minus 10 meters, right? We introduced the concept of nanometer, which is 10 to the minus 9 meters. So an atom is about one-tenth of a nanometer in size. And it consists of a nucleus shown here. So if I blow up the central part, I would get an uh, uh, atomic nucleus, which consists of two types of particles, uh, positively charged protons, indicated by red here, and neutral particles, those that do not carry any electric charge, neither positive or negative, and uh, they're called neutrons. And the nucleus is actually quite tiny compared to the size of the atom. The nucleus itself is about 100,000 uh, uh, times uh, smaller than the size of the atom. Now, so the, the nucleus is positively charged because it consists of protons, which carry positive charge, and neutrons, which are not charged, but as a whole unit, they carry positive charge. Now, normal atoms are electrically neutral. And electrical neutrality is provided by the electrons that are moving around the nucleus. OK? So each atom has a nucleus, which consists of protons and neutrons. And then there are electrons. They, they are negatively charged. They carry charge opposite to that of protons and they're bound to the nucleus by attractive electrical force. So the electrons move around the nucleus. And this example uh, uh, tells you that in the size of uh, this dot here, you could probably fit 10 million atoms uh, from one end to another. Therefore, they are extremely small we cannot see them with our eyes. We cannot see them under the microscope. But there are different techniques where people can actually image different parts of the atom. And this picture turns out to be correct. So the simplest atom is a debt of hydrogen. And its nucleus consists only of one particle of proton. So um, we say that its atomic number is one because it consists, it contains one proton, and atomic mass number is also one. The next one is helium. So remember, three quarters of the mass of any star, roughly three quarters, is made up of hydrogen. And about one quarter is made up of helium. Now, helium has uh, four particles in its nucleus. It has two protons, and therefore its atomic number is two. So atomic number refers to the number of protons in the nucleus. And it turns out that neutrons have mass roughly equal to that of proton. So I have two protons, two nucle nucleons, so then uh, the atomic mass number is four, four times that of a proton. Right? 
Then there are other chemical elements, but the one that is important for life is that of carbon. And the nucleus of carbon consists, well, it turns out that there are several types of carbon, uh, so-called isotopes of carbon. This isotope of carbon, carbon-12, it has a nucleus that consists of six protons, hence the atomic number is six, and it also contains uh, six neutrons, hence the atomic uh, mass number is 12. Now, each one of these atoms in, this, in its normal uh, state, when it's not ionized, is electrically neutral. That means that in the case of hydrogen, I have to have one electron moving around the hydrogen nu nucleus so that the total charge of the atom the total charge of positive nucleus and uh, the charge of the electrons around it is zero, right? So one, I have one proton in the nucleus and one electron orbiting around it. In the case of helium, I have two protons in the nucleus, and to make the atom neutral, I have to have two electrons with negative charge. Electron charge is equal in amount to that of a proton, but it's of opposite sign. So the, the total amount of electric charge on the atom when I count the charge of the nucleus and the charges of electrons is zero. Now, in the case of carbon-12, I have six protons in the nucleus, six neutrons as well, and six electrons moving around this nucleus would make carbon-12 neutral. Uh, but I have also additional so-called isotopes of carbon that have the same number of protons uh, as the carbon-12, that is six, and therefore the same number of electrons moving around it, because I, may, I need to make the entire atom electrically neutral, right? So whatever the number of protons in the nucleus, I have to have equal number of electrons moving around it. So carbon-13 th th has actually one more neutron. So it has six protons and seven neutrons. There is additional isotope of carbon. Again, I will have six electrons moving around this heavier nucleus because I still have six protons. I will have six electrons. In the case of carbon-14, I have two more protons, com uh, sorry, neutrons, compared to uh, carbon-12. Still six protons, and therefore still six electrons moving around it. Now, what determines the chemical behavior of an element is actually this ele electron cloud moving around the nucleus. The number of electrons will determine its chemical properties. So from the point of view of chemistry, how an atom binds to other elements, all these three different forms of carbon behave the same way because they have the same number of electrons moving around the nucleus. But uh, carbon-13 and car carbon-14 are heavier. Okay, the simplest atom is that of uh, hydrogen and the lightest. Okay, its nucleus consists of a proton, positive electric charge. A neutral hydrogen atom has one electron moving around uh, this nucleus. The next one in complexity and mass is helium. Now, the, hel the nucleus of helium consists of four particles. It has two protons, but it also has two neutrons. 
and uh, electrically neutral helium uh, atom then in order to be uh, electrically neutral has to have two electrons moving around the nucleus. Now the electrons are held bound in all atoms, the electrons are held bound to nucleus by electrical force. It turns out that this electrical force varies with distance as 1 over distance squared, just like the force of gravity, but it's much, much stronger than the force of gravity. It is 10 to the power 36 times stronger than the force of gravity. So what determines the properties of atoms is essentially the electrical forces between different charges. You might as well forget about the force of gravity between electrons and the nucleus because it's negligible compared to the electrical force. So the gravitational attraction between subatomic particles has plays no role in the properties of atoms. But you realize then that if the proton, so therefore helium is, for, uh, electrons are actually very light, about one over 2,000 mass of the proton. And so all the mass is in the nucleus. Okay, so I mentioned that three quarters of a star's mass is uh, hydrogen, and about uh, one quarter of its mass is helium. But because helium is four times more massive than hydrogen, that means that in terms of the number, not the mass, but the number of hydrogen atoms, uh, they are way over 90% of the number. So when I speak about three quarters of a, star's, of a star's hydrogen, I mean by mass, not by the number of atoms.